uh, typically when you go through a, a price move, a Bitcoin price move to the upside, you usually see long-term holders, which is a metric we monitor. It's an on-chain analytics metric. Um, and it means people who have not moved or wallets that have not moved their Bitcoin in 155 days or more. <laughs> yes. Well hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, Kathy Wood discusses Bitcoin and other crypto. According to Kathy Wood, when Kathy Wood was in abundance, our projected scenario was $1.5 million in five years. In 2027, we still have time to consider our options. Going to be accurate if you consider the institutional push into Bitcoin. When considering a new asset class, it's important to approach it with the responsibility of fiduciaries. Understanding the new code words for this asset class and how they relate to each other in terms of returns are significantly lower when compared to the costs of other assets. There are currently 19.6 million bitcoins in circulation. The maximum it will reach is 21 million. Well, there's a real concern considering the scarcity value and anticipating price increases. Every dollar from institutional investors entering now will likely yield significant returns. Last year was two years ago. Three were going to delve into it. These institutions are eager to possess it. What Kathy Wood found intriguing is that she just learned about it this morning. When observing a price increase in Bitcoin, it is common to notice long-term holders taking action, measurement. We keep track of its on-chain analytics metrics, which indicate user activity individuals who have not made any transactions or wallets that have not been active with their Bitcoin for 155 days. Yes, well, typically, when there is a significant price increase, like the one we've recently witnessed last year, it begins to decline as expected, staying true to form. The trend has shifted in recent days due to new information we have gathered. GBC recently sold some of its Bitcoin, resulting in no changes to those wallets. It's been a while since that was completed, at least for now, completed, and it's on the rise again. It's quite uncommon for the price to increase like that. Kathy would believe it's because the long-term holder is questioning why they would sell. Now that she's aware of all these institutions that possess nothing, there are factors to consider in this emerging asset class that should not be overlooked. And lots of things Kathy would discussed, so please watch the video to end. And like... Share this video and subscribe our channel, Everyday Finance. Thanks. Yes, uh, what's, we, we did um, something called Bitcoin Brainstorm. We do a Bitcoin uh, uh, Brainstorm monthly. And one of them was the convergence between uh, Bitcoin and a AI. And we had, uh, you'll probably know of his, his uh, developer name, Rose Beef, uh, from the Lightning from the Lightning Network. On, and he was talking about how in Africa already this convergence is redefining division of labor. Uh, I mean, the gig economy we understand here in the United States put that on steroids in terms of micro, micro gig economy in the emerging markets. And you have a, a, a whole a whole new kind of economy. So yes, very exciting. Yes, well, uh, we have all kinds of uh, metrics, but w w when I was uh, at uh, Abundance, uh, the uh, the forecast was, our bull case was $1.5 million in five years. So that would have been 2027. We still have time. And, uh, and we still think that's going to be right. Um, if you just look at the institutional push into Bitcoin, this new asset class, they have to consider it as fiduciaries. When you use that co those code words, new asset class, what it means, the correlation of these returns are very low compared to those of other assets. Especially so, as, as bonds and stocks are becoming more correlated, you need something uncorrelated. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And so they have to consider it. Now, what are we saying? There are 19.6 million Bitcoin out there right now. And the highest it will ever go is 21 million. 
uh, well, okay, there's real scarcity value. And what what is going to happen? The price increase for every institutional dollar pushing in now is going to be much higher than it was last year, two years ago. It's, you know, we're going to get uh, into, if these institutions really want to own it, what I found fascinating recently, just learned it this morning is, uh, typically when you go through a, a price move, a Bitcoin price move to the upside, you usually see long-term holders, which is a metric we monitor. It's an on-chain analytics metric. Um, and it means people who have not moved or wallets that have not moved their Bitcoin in 155 days or more. <laughs> yes. Well, normally when you go through a price move to the upside, a very nice one like we've seen in the last year, that tends to start moving down. And it did that true to form, but it has reversed in recent days because what we learned is uh, uh, GBTC sold some of its Bitcoin. So that was those wallets hadn't been changed in a long time, right? Now that is done, at least for the time being. Now that is done and um, it's going back up again as the price goes up. That's highly unusual. And I think it is because um, the long-term holder is saying, why would I sell now when I know all these institutions, which own nothing, own nothing in this realm, in this new asset class, they have to consider it because it is a new asset class. ARK Invest organized a monthly event called Bitcoin Brainstorm, where they discuss various topics related to Bitcoin. The intersection of Bitcoin and AI is something you might be familiar with. His name is Rose Beef, and he is from the Lightning Network. He discussed how this is already happening in Africa. Convergence is reshaping the division of labor. The gig economy comprehend the situation here in the United States and amplify it significantly in terms of detail. Discussing the gig economy in emerging markets introduces a whole new economic landscape. Let's back to the Kathy Wood interview. Yes, and first let me tell you a little story about Bill. Um, in 2017, when Bitcoin was below $1,000, um, and there was a war going on between the the Bitcoin maximalists and, you know, those uh, focused on the Ethereum network. Um, Chris Berniski, um, you may know him. He was our first uh, uh, crypto analyst and went off to start placeholder. Um, he decided, you know what? We should have a meetup at our office between the Bitcoin and Ethereum supporters. And we'll we'll provide Religion. rules of the Yeah, <laughs> we'll provide rules of the road. And Bill was the grown up in the room, set the tone from you know the Ethereum uh, side, and we had a talk a, a, such a productive talk that I went out and bought Ether right away. We own uh, you know I already owned a lot of Bitcoin um, because it was so convincing that there is a place for both. And Bill yes, is a we, brilliant adult in this space. Yes, for sure. Yes, yes. And so, so uh, yes, we're um, very excited about the Ethereum network and Solana. And so they all play different roles. And what I love is there's kind of a little competition. Uh, I think competition is always good uh, to keep the other networks honest. And uh, so, yes, we think that... Um, Decentralized finance, and we do call it now the internet financial system, which is really a Chris I like that. Point. Absolutely. Um, and taking the middlemen out of yes. everything. You know, when Get the we sand did, out of the gears. Yeah, when we did our digital wallet work, um, you know, we were, we were saying, okay, let's try to figure out how much it, how many steps it takes for a merchant or for a consumer to pay a merchant. And that was nine steps, including the two of them. Uh, and that's, uh, and, and, you know, there are many other middlemen, but these were the most direct steps. And that is a one, well, a two to 4% tax on every purchase in the world. If you're using, uh, intermediaries, credit cards and so forth. So, 
Uh, just think about that. Cutting, you know, that tax rate dramatically is is going to increase access dramatically. According to Kathy Wood, back when Bitcoin was trading below $1,000 and a fierce battle was raging between the Bitcoin maximalists, those who are focused on the Ethereum network like Chris Beresey, he was our initial crypto analyst and ventured off to establish placeholder. He made the decision to pursue a new path. We should organize a gathering at our office for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Enthusiasts, backers, and we will provide guidelines accordingly. Bill set the tone in the room as the mature individual, Ethereum side. And we had such a productive discussion that Kathy Wood decided to take action, purchased Ether immediately. And she already had a significant amount of Bitcoin. If you learned something from this video, then please like this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance. And we will meet in next video. Thanks.